Hey everybody, welcome home. You're watching Legacy Television. I'm Jeremy Pearsons and we are glad to have you with us today here in the House of Faith. There is always a place for you in the family of God, the household of faith. I'm coming to you once again from the sanctuary of Legacy Church here in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. As you can tell, we're still under construction, but amazing things are happening right now in this buy up and build out project that you and I have been involved in together for quite some time. And I want to say to those of you who are partners with Sarah and I in this ministry, you are doing so much. I'll say it like this. God is doing so much and he's doing it through you. He is proving himself faithful and he's doing it through your faithfulness, your faithfulness to pray and your faithfulness to give. We are making awesome pro uh, progress in this project. For the first time, I'm able to come to you right now from the platform, from the stage here in the sanctuary of this church. The, the stage floor has been poured. We can stand on it. It's solid. It's a safe place to be. And we're just so thankful for the great things that are happening. Uh, good things are happening all throughout the sanctuary. Uh, the walls are getting ready to be painted, getting all of that prepped. Um, the number of things, AC units. Let me show you what's going on outside. We put in some air conditioning units and the people who are coming to the church or who will be coming to the church are going to be very thankful for these. I promise you that. Uh, a new roof has gone on. This is an awesome thing. When we bought the building, the inspection report said that we needed a new roof. And as a part of the uh, contract and agreement to purchase the building, a new roof came with it. So just in the last few weeks, this roof is going on and it's beautiful. You can see this from the road from Highway 24 that's just uh, right out here. And we're just so thrilled with the progress that we're making. The roof is going on, like I said. The walls are getting ready to be painted. The stage floor is poured. The air conditioning units are going on. This is, this is really uh, an, an awesome and a welcome sight for us to see this kind of progress being made. Like I said, God's been so good and so faithful, and he's doing it through you. If you want to be a part of this buy up and build out project, you can do that. We are in a 30,000 square foot facility, and as many of you know, we have released faith for $100 a square foot. And we believe that when that is uh, all come in, then we can, we can open up the doors of this church. We can have people in, we can have families in, and we're excited about that. And, and we're getting closer to it all the time. As a matter of fact, right now, as, the, as of this moment, while I'm recording this, we are sitting at 23,425 square feet paid for. That puts us at just over 78% complete. And that's the goodness of God. That's the grace of God. And all the glory goes to our good God. And those of you who are partners, this is what your partnership is doing. You are building a place. You are building a platform from which we will reach the nations and all the glory goes to God. So if you want to be a part of this buy up and build out project, number of ways you can get involved. You can give um, via text message. If you want to text the keyword L TV and any dollar amount to the number 28950, that's going to go right into this buy up and build out project. Of course, that's for those of you watching inside the United States. If you're watching outside the United States, you can give online at pearsonsministries.com and all the instructions and information you need will be there on the website. Uh, if you'd like to give via mail, use the address that you see there on your screen and make sure you mark on your check that you want it to go to the buy up and build out project if that's what you want to do. Um, we are so thrilled with the progress we're making and once again, partners, thank you so much. Father, we thank you for the giving of the people. We we receive it into this ministry. We thank you for the awesome progress that you are strengthening us and enabling us to make. And I pray over everybody who's giving and is a part of this offering today. And I call you blessed in the name of Jesus. And may everything you set your hand to do in God prosper. And whatever it is God's called you to buy up and whatever it is he's called you to build out, I believe that your seed into this kingdom project will produce an awesome harvest for you and you'll be able to see it. I believe the Spirit of God will quicken you on the inside and you'll say, man, this good thing God did for us, and the, the door was open wide to that when you sowed into this project. That's just how these things work. And we thank God for 
you and we thank God for what he's doing here at Legacy Church. Now, over the last several weeks, several months, as most of the nation has been uh, in a lockdown and we've been restricted over, you know, how many people we can, can be together in one room, uh, a lot of churches have been having to meet online. And of course, in the shape that this room is in, we couldn't have people in here if we wanted to. But we've used this as an opportunity to go ahead and start Sunday morning church services for Legacy Church. And like I said, over the last month, we've been having church from this room and it's going out to the congregation of Legacy Church and to you, our partners all over the world. So today on this broadcast, I wanna take you right back into what we've been in over the last several weeks and the Lord's been talking to us about renovation and transformation and he's using this natural environment that we're in right now as we watch this transformation process take place in this building and in this room. It's been a really crystal clear picture of the kind of renovation and transformation that should be taking place in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives all the time. So that's where we've been in Legacy Church, and we want you to be a part of this word with us as well. So let's spend a few minutes together in praise and worship, and we'll get right into the word.
You know, you've heard us say it, that the foundation for this church is in the book of Ephesians chapter 3. that says, to him be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's what we want and that's what we will have in this church. Whatever brings him glory. Whatever makes God look good, that's what we're going to have. And if salvation brings him glory, we will have it. If healing brings him glory, that's what we will have. If deliverance and peace and joy and prosperity brings glory to the name of Jesus, that's what we'll have in this place. And there is no expense too great or too much or too high. It's worth it. Why are we building and remodeling and renewing even though it's expensive? Because we're looking past what we've got to what we can have. Don't let the cost talk you out of the renewing and the remodeling of your own mind and your heart and the way you think and believe. Let me keep going in this. Uh, another big reason I believe people are so resistant and don't like this building process and the remodel process. Here's, here's, here's one for you. It takes longer than you want it to. See, that's what we found out. <laughs> that's what we've learned through this whole process is it takes a lot longer than you really want it to. I mean, we moved up here with these grand plans. Let's see, we'll get there in the summer. We can start church by the fall. That seems easy, right? It takes longer than you want it to. This remodel, this reconstruction process always seems to take longer than you want it to, than you intended it to. But the scripture has something to say about that as well. Go to the book of Hebrews and let's look in the 10th chapter. This is where we were as we were talking about our offering tonight, today, excuse me. But it says in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, begin in the 32nd verse. He says, recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Now, this is what we read a few minutes ago. Don't cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need, he said, of endurance. You have need of endurance. I believe it's the King James Bible and maybe other translations say, you need patience. Listen, if the Bible says you need patience, what do you need? You need patience. I know the remodel process, and I'm finding this out, takes longer than you want it to. But what do you need when something's taken longer than you want it to? You need patience patience. Now, oftentimes we hear this word patient and we immediately think, you know, tapping foot, arms folded, staring at the clock. When's it going to happen? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. But patience is not so much about waiting as it is about the condition in which you wait. Now, this is a big reason that people resist change, not just in the natural, not just building a natural building, but in the remodel, in the renewing of the mind is they get tired of how long it takes. I just want to be different and I want to be different now. But you need patience. You need endurance. You need to let God go to work in you and you need to give him time. It takes time sitting under the word of God. This is actually what I was studying when the Lord redirected me. But in the book of John chapter eight, Jesus said, the, the Bible says, Jesus said to the Jews that believed on him, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed. Other translations say abide, but they mean the same thing, to abide, to continue, to stay. Just stay with it. I, I know we've all seen 
failures and shortcomings and mistakes in our lives and we want to be different, we want to think different, we want to live different. Yes, I want a life that proves the existence of God. Yes, I want to live a life that proves His will is good. Yes, we want to live what we read there in Romans chapter 12, but the renewing of the mind is a process that requires time. Don't throw away your faith. Let me remind you what the Spirit of God is saying to us. We're all under construction. I know it takes longer than you want it to, but through faith and patience, we inherit the promise. In other words, when you run out of patience, you're out of faith. You have no more faith than you do patience and endurance. And the scripture tells us you have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Say it out loud. Lord, I need patience. Lord, if you say I need endurance, I need endurance. And there's such pressure and there's such, such temptation to quit the process before it's over. Don't throw away your faith. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. You are not a quitter. And I don't care if you've quit everything you've ever started from this day forward. Your pastor said it. You are not a quitter. Don't throw away your faith. I know it takes longer than you want it to, but give him time. Continue in the word. Continue in the word. That word continue doesn't just mean you hear it. It means you put it into practice. Keep hearing the word and keep doing the word that you hear. Wake up every day and sit down with the word of God again and say, I'm going to see something today. I'm going to hear something today that's going to go to work and remodel me on the inside. I'm going to see something, I'm going to hear and receive something from the Word of God that, that, that is going to further this construction process that's going on in the way I think and the way I believe. And then you sit there, and this is what helps me. I come before the Word, and if I will sit there with a pen in one hand and a highlighter in the other, it changes the way I see God's Word. And I know that sounds silly, but think about it. Just by, just by having these two things in my hand, it's a posture of expectation. I'm sitting here believing that I'm going to see something, something worth making a note about, something worth highlighting and, and causing it to stand out in my thinking. And it changes the way I approach the word of God. And Jesus said, if you continue in it, if you'll just Stay with it. Why do people so fight and resist the process of change? Because it takes long. But listen, time's going by anyway. You might as well be staying with this. Stick with this and watch God and his word go to work in your life and do what only his word can do. So we're talking about being under construction, talking about the, the construction process and and a lot of reasons why people are resistant to it and why you and I, we are not going to resist it. Uh, we've talked about it's expensive. We've talked about it takes longer than you want it to. Here's one for you. To, to, to commit to this construction process, you have to be open to making changes. You've got to be open to corrections. And that's a big reason that people resist the renewing the remodeling, the renovation of the mind because it's going to require being corrected. And people don't like it. They don't want to be corrected. It's not fun to be told you are wrong. I get it. I've been told that. But if you, we're, we're here in the book of Hebrews, just, just look over a couple of chapters into chapter 12. We're talking about endurance and that's what this chapter is about as well. It says in verse five, my son, do not despise the chastening. That means correction, the correction of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you're rebuked by him. That's a strong word for whom the Lord loves. He chastens or he corrects and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening or correction, God deals with you as with sons. 
For what son is there whom a father does not correct? To go through and to commit to this remodel process, the renewing of the mind, the ripping out of old ways of thinking and the building up of new ways, strong ways, a firm foundation built on the word of God, it's going to require some correction. And we've experienced that even naturally speaking with this building process. We had some things in mind, some things we wanted to do. And then you bring in these people who are like, well, that's not code and you can't do that. And you can't put that there and you can't do this like that. You know, it's correction. And you gotta be open to it. You gotta be willing to, to make some changes. But don't resist the renewing of your mind don't resist the transformation that can take place if you'll yield to that just because you got to receive some correction. Now, there's a difference between being corrected and receiving correction. And people, as parents, you know this, you've got a child, you know the difference between correcting them and then when they've actually received it and heard it and changed as a result of it. Man, God has put people in our lives because he loves us. He's given us his word. He's given us his Holy Spirit. And a big part of the spirit of God's job within you is to reveal Jesus to you. And as you see Jesus, you're looking at perfection. And that perfection, when you behold perfection, it will bring correction. Because you see him and then you look back and you go, okay, wait a second, this is not looking like that. So what do I need to do to make this look more like that? Now that is already on the inside of you. That is the grace deposit that was put in you when you were born again. But the Spirit of God will convict each and every one of us and say, you see this over here? This needs to be changed. You hear this thought? You hear these words? Let, let's not say it like that. We don't think like that. That doesn't match what's going on in here. That's correction. And you got to be open to it. And people love to think, well, I'll get my correction, you know, from God. He can tell me if I'm doing something wrong. That's not exactly how it works. God has put people in each one of our lives ministry gifts, pastors, leaders, different ones that he speaks to and he speaks through. And sometimes it comes through the voice of correction. And I know it's not fun, but if we will receive it, not just hear it, actually receive it, then we get to experience this whole other facet of the love of God that if you're not receiving and if you're not open to correction, there's this whole part of his love that you're never experiencing. It's the scripture told us that he, uh, he deals with you as a son. If you're not receiving correction, then there, there is a whole part of this father and child relationship that you're not getting if you're not receiving correction. But people don't want to go through this rebuilding process because of all the changes that they're going to have to make. I don't want to do that if I got to change this, if I got to change that. And you know, I got to be honest with you. As a church, not just, not legacy church, but the church in general, we have told people for years and years and years, generations, decades, centuries maybe, come as you are. You've heard that said before, come as you are. You know, that, that's good and it's right. And, and, and that I believe is the heart of God, that he's not waiting on you to get everything fixed up and made right. He's not waiting on you to go through the whole remodel process and then come to him. No, I believe that's good and it's right. Come as you are. If you remember last week during our resurrection service, we looked at Luke chapter 15 where the prodigal son took that step and came home and the father came running to him and the father said, quick, go get a robe. Go get the best robe and put it on him. That was his robe, the father's robe. That is the robe of righteousness. And I love that word, quick. Do it right now. Don't wait for him to go get cleaned up. I mean, man, this guy came home covered in pig stink. But the father said, quick, clothe him. Quick, 
put a ring on his finger. That's identity. That's authority. He said, quick, put sandals on his feet. If you understand that, then you know that it was the slaves and the servants in the home that were barefoot, but the sons, the sons had shoes on their feet. And this kid came home and he said, I just want to be a servant. He said, no, I'll put shoes on those feet and do it now. Do it quick. So yes, there, there is truth to us saying, come as you are. You don't got to go through this remodel process before you come to God. But I think somewhere along the way in telling people, come as you are, we gave them the impression that what we meant was stay that way. But that's not what we're saying. That's not what the word is saying. What we should be saying is, yes, come as you are, but leave as he is. Come as you are into the presence of God, but then let his word go to work in you and change and remodel and renew from the inside out. Yeah, come as you are. I know we we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Bring it. He can handle it. And I'm saying as the head of this church and the pastor of this church representing me and my wife, Sarah, come as you are. You are welcome. These doors are open, but come with an openness and a readiness and an excitement about changing, about coming into the presence of God and being transformed as you hear the word, as you sit under the word, as you let the word of God go to work in your life, let it do the work on the inside that produces a change on the outside. And man, I know I know it is not politically correct to tell anybody that they need to change anything. And we have just gotten so used to just telling people, hey, you're, you're just beautiful, just like you are. You're just perfect. You don't have to change a thing. You just be you and you just live your truth. But what if the person you're talking to is nuts? What if the person you're talking to is crazy and stupid and messed up. They don't don't need to stay that way. And until you meet Jesus, that is you. We're all that way. And it takes takes seeing him for who he is and it takes knowing how he sees us to bring change into our lives. Don't resist the remodel process. We're all under construction. We want to thank you for watching Legacy Television today. Uh, Of course, we can only show you a part of this message, but the whole thing is available to you on our website. It's available to you through the podcast. It's available to you through the Legacy Studios app as well. So we'll put all that information on the screen. And we just want to make sure you're getting the Word of God into your life, into your heart. And we pray over you every single day. Those of you who are partners in this ministry, we call you blessed and increased in Jesus' name. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next time on Legacy Television.